Hey there, this is your host, Dr. Lori Friesen, and you're listening to episode number 59 of Beginning Teacher Talk, where we are going to talk all about how to get relief from I'm not doing enough when teaching from home. Well, hello there, my friends. How are you doing? What a loaded question that is, right? (laughs) I'm getting such a kick out of people on Instagram who are saying things like, I can't stand it when people ask me what I've been up to lately because my answer is probably a lot like yours. It's been another very full day of staying in my pajamas and staring out the window. Now, of course, that's not what's happening in your world because if you're like most teachers I know, COVID-19 has required that you learn an entirely new skill set with these new requirements and demands for you to now teach online. Like being a new teacher isn't hard enough. Now you need to learn all of this in addition to that. Oh, and I know what a challenge that has been because I, I've i seen all of the comments. I've seen what you're saying online. I know how hard it's been for you, but I just, I want you to pause for just a moment because I want to tell you, if you're multitasking, come back to me for just a moment because I want you to know how proud I am of you for rising, for digging in as you always do to figure this out and do the very best that you can for your students. Elementary teachers are seriously among my favorite people on this entire planet because you are the salt of the earth. I know you're worrying about your students. I know you're constantly wondering if you're doing enough and constantly feeling like you aren't. And that pervasive feeling of not doing enough is what I want to really dive in and explore today. Everyone's doing this entire online learning thing differently, depending on the tools that they have access to. And it's uncovered an entirely new understanding and awareness of the inherent inequality in our education system across the globe, because the lack of resources in some cases, or the blatant inequalities that are suddenly present when every child's home is suddenly on display for the world to see when their class gathers on Zoom has raised an entirely new set of problems. And I think that the somewhat like the stabilizing force of the school and the classroom has now been removed. And a lot of us are feeling the weight of worrying for our students in an entirely new way, because there's kind of a new form of bullying that could start happening. It's, it's, it's hard to talk about. So I just wanted to acknowledge that first. And Then talk about what you can do to get some relief from that constant pressure and worry about your students in this whole new way, from your concern that you are never doing enough. So we're going to talk about some very practical things that you can do to kind of calm that worry, calm that fear. And I have seven different things to share with you today as I've been thinking about this. And the first thing is something that I actually recommend you do even when you're at school teaching regularly in your classroom, and that's to keep office hours. So the first way you can ensure that you're going to get some relief from I'm not doing enough and that whole treadmill is to ensure that you've created and are holding to office hours. Because working and teaching from home does not mean that parents and students now have access to you 24 hours a day. And it does not mean that you should suddenly be answering emails on Sunday afternoon or at nine o'clock PM when you're getting ready for bed and you get that horrible email from somebody and then you can't sleep. I've done the same thing. I'm guilty of it myself. And I had to learn the hard way. You can't really do that. You can't do that to yourself. It's only mid-April. And if your school is out for the rest of the year and the school year for you goes until the end of May or in some cases mid-June, you can't keep up a schedule of being available 24 hours a day. So if you haven't already done so, we have to really start thinking about this as a long-term solution. So if you haven't already done so, I strongly encourage you to create a schedule for when you'll be available to students and to parents and stick to it. Now, of course, there's sometimes emergencies, there's things you might want to attend to. But for most, the most part, I would encourage you to write to parents to communicate the office hours that you decide to set and let them know which hours of the, the day that you will be checking email. So for example, Commit to being available to students and parents between the hours of 8.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m., just like the regular school day, and tell them you'll be checking your email every day between, I don't know, 10 and 11, and between 3 and 4 
p.m. if they have any questions. Just decide to keep a schedule and be sure that includes breaks for you as well. Unless you've committed to having lunch with your kiddos as a special treat, for example, maybe once a week, whatever works for you, also let them know when you won't be available for that half hour at lunch or whenever it's going to be and a couple of breaks throughout the day. You need a break throughout the day. You can't be constantly on alert. And secondly, I would encourage you to decide, you have to really decide to stop making choices out of guilt. So related to the first topic, my first point, you might be giving parents and students too much access to you because you're feeling guilty because you can't be there for them during this time, or because you feel like this is what you're supposed to do. But feeling like that's what you're supposed to do is going to take you down a negative rabbit hole. I would encourage you to work on releasing feelings of guilt for things that you have no control over. You did not create this pandemic and it was not your choice to be home and away from your students. You don't have any control over what's going on in the world. And you burning yourself out because you feel guilty that you can't be there for your students is not going to help anyone. And again, I know it doesn't help when you get an angry email from a parent who's asking why you aren't constantly available or why you aren't doing more or why you aren't online with their children all day, every day. This is another one I'm hearing about a lot. But instead of feeling guilty for not being there all the time, choose compassion and grace for that parent because their frustration has more to do with the situation and with not knowing how to navigate all of this themselves than it has to do with you. They've never taught third grade math before or whatever grade you're teaching, and they are having to learn really quickly a deep appreciation for your many gifts and talents that you so take for granted as you work with and support the children inside the classroom every day. Their need is really big, but And they've all been thrown into an impossible situation, all of us, including parents, and we're all doing the best we can. So the answer to their overwhelm is not to feel guilt because you aren't doing more. And here's why. That constant pervasive underlying feeling of guilt that you may be laying on yourself is literally a heaviness that you can only carry around with you for so long until you get worn down and make yourself susceptible to getting sick. So the best thing you can do for your students is to choose to lighten your own load. No one else is going to do it for you. To choose to release the guilt and take care of yourself so that you can continue to be be there for them. We're really bad as teachers for doing this. We wanted, we're caregivers, we're caretakers, and we want to keep taking care of everyone else. But it is, you hear it, for a reason. It's true. You you want to support the parents of your students, but your job is not to be on call 24 hours a day to teach them how to teach. That isn't your job. So the third way to get relief from I'm not doing enough at home as you teach from home is to set your priorities and assign less work for your students. This is not the time to try to impress yourself or anyone else with doing all the things. As I saw someone, I might be spending too much time on Instagram. As I saw someone post on Instagram the other day, they someone wrote, this is not a pandemic. Sorry, this is a pandemic, not a productivity contest. So good, right? You're in this for the long game. So find your rhythm and relax into it because teaching from home is not the same as teaching at school. One hour of online instruction requires a whole lot more prep and planning and time than teaching in the regular classroom does. So you need to set your priorities with regard to what you feel is most important for students to be doing right now and only require them to do that work. And right now that means the basics. So depending on what your school is requiring of you, I would only assign work in the core subjects, reading, writing, and math. And strongly encourage your students to do something every day that also gets their bodies moving. So those three topics, as well as getting your kiddos moving every day, because you know, a steady diet of Netflix or YouTube kids while laying on the couch is only going to contribute to feelings of depression, even in children. So I would make it a requirement that kids get up and get moving every single day. And in the core areas, 
reading, writing, and math, keep things simple. Have your students, for example, choose a book that they want to read and give them a few comprehension questions to answer about that book. In writing, ask your students to write in a journal each day about topics like how they're feeling right now or about the 10 things they will do as soon as the social isolation requirement is over or what they're t- their top five picks are for shows to watch while at home and why they think they're awesome. In math, give your students problems to solve that use the names of their students to help them to feel a little bit closer to their classmates while they're separated. The point is to ask your students to do less work, but more meaningful work, because now more than ever, the point is just to keep kids engaged. So rather than creating a whole bunch of complex assignments and putting pressure on yourself, I invite you to keep things simple and keep the, t- the small tasks you're requiring of them meaningful so that when your class does get onto a Zoom call or however else your class is connecting, they actually have some great things to share with the group to help keep everyone connected because that's really the point right now is just keeping them engaged and keeping them connected. Now, the fourth thing I wanted to say to you today is to be careful about starting to unconsciously compare yourself to other people. So we do have more time on our hands and there are lots of people doing all different kinds of things in the teaching world. So when you go online and you start scrolling and comparing yourself to everyone else out there who seems to be doing so much more than you or who seems to be so much better than you are, it's really easy to fall into the comparison game and feel like you aren't doing enough. But the thing is, everyone's handling this in their own way. So I just want to remind you to stay in your own lane. We've talked about this before on this show, but so many of the teachers who you're seeing doing all these amazing things have been teaching for a long time. They have a lot of resources. Some of them even have a small business on the side and a team of people helping them to create resources quickly and you'd never know it. They might look like they're pulling all this off themselves, but they actually have several people working alongside them to make all the magic happen. And even if they don't have all these people, good for them. They must be very tired. You don't want to burn yourself out that way. It doesn't say anything about you. And it certainly doesn't mean that that's what you should be doing. So just let yourself be inspired and grab all of the great ideas and enjoy using them with your students. But don't let that mean anything negative about you and what you should be doing. We have a tendency to should all over ourselves. Don't do that. So I am making a point of getting away from social media. I'm on there more than ever because I feel like that's where you are and I want to support you. But I really am turning it off as much as possible throughout the day and just staying in my own lane as tempting as it is to keep going back to it. And also, there's nothing wrong with unfollowing people who might be bringing up those feelings for you of not doing enough, because you don't need that extra pressure or those negative emotions right now, or ever for that matter. So it's okay to unfollow people, even if you just want to unfollow them during this time, because it might be contributing to some stress for you. The fifth thing I want to say to you is to stay here now and not let fear and uncertainty about the future control you. And here's what I mean by that. Last week on the show, we talked about how fear and uncertainty can be the most difficult parts of being quarantined right now, because it's actually the fear of the unknown of how long this will go on that can be the hardest part of this entire experience. So when we project too far into the future that we begin to feel like we don't have any control because we start playing the what if game and it may not be a positive one. So for example, we start saying things like, well, what if my students don't do enough work this year and they're so far behind that they can't be successful at the next grade level? Or we say, what if I'm not doing enough right now and that's the reason my students fail next year? So fear and uncertainty about the future and playing this what if game is not going to serve you or your students because again, you really don't have any control over how this is all going to play out. What you do have control over is what you do now, right now in this present moment. What you can do is ask yourself, what can I do today to serve my students best? 
Stay here now in this present moment with your students and let that be enough because that's all you have any control over anyways. Worrying about the future doesn't improve it. It only takes away any feeling of peace that you could have today. And I had to learn this the hard way actually too, because I do like to go ahead into the future and I'm a planner. And if you're like me, you're probably like this because most teachers are planners. But And so I had batched content, for example, for this show, and I had several different shows lined out, and I was like, ooh, this will be really good for the spring to support my students, and then everything changed. And so all of that is set aside, and I'm creating entirely new content for you every week. I'm not batching. I'm not running ahead. I'm not trying to prepare anything in advance because I don't know what you're going to need. I need to stay in this with you and I need to stay live with you in the experience and ensure that I'm asking myself that question for you. What can I do today? What can I do this week to serve my audience the best? And so I encourage you to do that with your students. Just stay in it and don't go too far ahead into the future and worry Let's stay in this right now and just focus on today. Now, number six, I really encourage you to connect with positive people and move your body. And you're probably thinking, hold on, Lori, how am I supposed to connect with positive people? I'm quarantined. But here's the thing. Just because you're quarantined, it doesn't mean that you can't connect with your favorite people. In fact, once you have your office hours in place, I would encourage you to start scheduling some fun time and downtime for yourself into your calendar. And you can do this every week, even when you are quarantined, even when you're not quarantined, like later on. But even when you are quarantined, you can still do this every single week. So plan and schedule into your calendar, evening cocktail hour with your girlfriends on FaceTime or Skype. So what I'm doing tonight, actually, I'm connecting with one of my very best friends in the whole world. We're going to get together on FaceTime and have a glass of wine tonight and just talk on FaceTime. We can still have our time together. Or plan a weekly meeting with your grade level team to just let off steam and support and help each other as you all work to navigate this and create resources. And working together to do this is going to be so much easier than trying to do it all yourself. Or if your team doesn't work well together, schedule a weekly time with other teachers who you love and who will support you. Because your emotions probably feel like they're all over the place right now because this is such a weird time. And just because you aren't in the classroom or out in your regular life, that doesn't mean that you can't connect with other positive people. Also, spring is coming, and even though we're in the midst of all of this, as I talked about last week, one of the highlights of my day now is my evening walk with my husband to enjoy the beauty and the warmth of the season, the smell of fresh-cut grass, and to see all the baby horses and new life all around us in Kentucky as everything wakes up. It's just so beautiful outside. So whatever it is for you, maybe it's yoga. I hate yoga. (laughs) I'd like to like yoga, but I can't do it. So maybe it's yoga. Maybe it's yoga on your back patio. Maybe it's going for a long walk while you're talking on the phone with a friend or with your mom. Find some way to get outside and move your body every day because nothing helps to relieve feelings of stress and anxiety quicker than getting out and enjoying a change of scenery, especially when we're locked down like this. It's just such a refreshing experience. It's helped me to keep my sanity throughout all of it and to feel positive and, you know, looking forward with in a good way. And that's my last thing I want to say to you today is to consider using this time to think forward to good, not negative one, what if scenarios. So to get relief from that, I'm not doing enough feeling as you teach from home is to start using this time to think forward to all of the good ahead. Instead of focusing on the fear and the uncertainty of how long this will last, which we can't control, put your focus instead on feeling your way forward to all of the good and all of the positive things that lie ahead. So if you're just graduating from your education program and you're interviewing for a position in the fall, why not use this time to work on your portfolio and prepare for interviews? I just did an entire episode all about how to best prepare for a teaching interview. So I'll link to that one for you inside the show notes. But use this time strategically. You have some time to actually prepare for your interviews at home right now. 
Or maybe you've taught a year or two already, and maybe you want to use this time to get clear and brush up on your classroom management skills. I have a whole program called your Chaos to Confidence Classroom Management System that's available for only $37. It's a self-paced program that walks you through each of the areas of classroom management where you might be having problems, and it shows you how to troubleshoot and restart the main routines and procedures inside your classroom. So if things weren't going as smoothly as you'd like them to before this whole quarantine hit, maybe that's something you want to work on. But any kind of professional development that you want to focus on right now, this is a great opportunity for you. If if writing is something that you want to work on, look up some writing workshops that you can do online to learn how to teach writing better, whatever it is for you. In fact, just last week, I opened the doors for four days only to my Ready for School Academy because some of the teachers inside my Beginning Teacher Talk private Facebook group were commenting about how they want to use some of this time to start getting ready for their first school year. So whatever it is for you, I encourage you to think forward to all of the good ahead and take advantage of this time at home to learn a new skill set or brush up on something that you want to get better at. So there you have it. I hope that helps. And I hope that you have a wonderful week in spite of this quarantine. I hope that you decide to think positively and think forward and stay in the moment with your kiddos right now, because that's what they need the most. They don't need you putting more pressure on yourself because whatever you put down, your kids are going to pick up, right? They pick up everything that you put down. And if you are feeling positive and light and supportive and present for them, they're going to feel safer and more secure throughout this entire experience as a result. You are their leader. Whether or not you feel ready, you are their leader. They are someone that you would, that they adore and they look up to. And how you handle this is going to determine their entire experience of it. All right. Until next time, remember, just because you're a beginning elementary teacher teaching from home, there is no need for you to struggle like one. Bye for now. Bye.